Um, so yeah, let's go back to this attack real quick. I don't want to miss any of that. So while this harassment is going over here at the third, I did a little poke up into the into the uh, main. I saw all of the infe all of investors were gone. So what I did, I moved up, put the force fields down. You can see all the force fields down, pretty much blocking all of the roaches out. And then what I did, I sniped a couple of overlords at first beforehand, and then I quickly blinked back, and then I stormed under all of the... Um, overlords. What that'll do is that'll pick off any initial overlords with the stalkers and then the storms will, if he decides to drop right away while my stalkers were still there, anything that he's dropping will instantly pretty much die to the storms and then if there's any weak overlords they can also kill those off which would be pretty added, uh, added a nice touch but now as we continue through this I'm gonna continue storming. See he started to drop some banelings and they are getting killed off by some of the storms and then the roaches are still kind of just durbin behind the force fields. And then after that, really just got to pull the stalkers back, split them a little bit, and then boom. All the banelings are gone from the initial storms, and what you're left with is still a good chunk of immortals and some more, and a bunch of stalkers left against only roach infester. And you're still going to be able to trade very well at the plus three attack at this point. He's only got plus two and no armor. I still have this war prism going around doing some extra harassment. It's going to go into the natural as well and get a lot of work done. The fourth base is going to be able to get sniped. His ultralisks also died. I killed two of them, I believe. And then in comes with a warp in of zealous into the natural. Always want to be keeping that war prism active during all these engagements. If you can, uh, in this kind of style, if you can really keep the zerg um, all around the map spread out, then it's going to be you're going to have a lot easier time. I noticed that my uh, army was getting whittled down a bit. I was really only down to stalkers. All my important units kind of got killed off by the infestors. So I noticed that and um, did a lot of good harassment with the war prism to keep him back so he didn't try to go for a killing blow as I was uh, weak. As he probably, he might have been able to, but um, again, I don't know. Cannons up and war bins, I don't know. But continuing harassment, always keeping that war prism active, trying to uh, snipe off any important tech structures. My D, uh, DTs are already done as well, and I'm going to try to get off the, or get the Ultralisk Cavern and important tech structures, but that's not actually going to work. He's going to fungle it. Um, I also got a Stargate. Once I noticed that Infestors were, were out, you got to put down that Stargate for a mothership because if they get too many Broodlords out, he's not going for Broodlords this game, however, then you're not going to be able to survive well without a mothership. And where am I actually getting that? There it is, at the third base. I'm getting chrono, bo chrono boosting it out as much as possible. Look at the income real quick. Due to my harassment, he's all only down to 57 harvesters. I'm still at 92. I've got double his income pretty much, so this war prism working well for my for my side already killed 26 workers I'm even sacrificing some because I realize how uh, many probes I have and he's gonna try to go in for this attack and it's kind of hard like if you look at this real quick like when it gets to this late game situation it's pretty hard to engage into something like this when you have Bane uh, Roach Ultra Infester because the banelings are what they use mostly to do a lot of the quick damage to whittle everything down and the roaches and the ultras kind of clean up a bit. So when you're sacrificing, or just kind of like rolling in like this into cannons, and I already have storm, oh, I don't actually have storm ready for this, but anyway, if I did have storm, that would be even better. But um, them trying to attack into this, it's like, it is pretty suicidal, especially with warpins, so... If you can get this kind of situation set up, then it's going to be really good. And the mothership is also out, so that's going to be great. There's no overseers in sight. There's one back at his base for uh, DTs and whatnot. So this engagement is going to go down. As you can see, my zealots and archons soaking up all of the banelings. Everything else stays perfectly alive, and that was a pretty bad trade for him. He lost all of his banelings, and um, now he's kind of just stuck on lings and roaches. Working them now into banelings again. Did I do anything else with this? No, not yet. I do some more stuff with this war prism later. Keeping this observer in the middle here just to make sure he's not moving out when I don't notice. For some reason, I don't have that watchtower. That's bad. You should always have the watchtowers. So then, once you get your mothership up, it's pretty much um, all about just getting a good positioning with your army, getting a good vortex off. I don't quite have enough yet, and now 
again an engagement. All my Zealots and Archons are in the front, soaking up all of the Baneling hits. And you can see still three of them are alive. Vortex does go down. He does put everything into it, and that's going to do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, I notice I have a pretty dominating advantage right here, so I'm just going to use my Warp Bins. Four DTs, going to go ahead and snipe as many bases as possible. Down goes the natural. I also have another Warp Prism up here that's going to be doing some more uh, warping in of the DTs. And once that Vortex comes out, then there's, I mean, there's not much you can do against Archon Toilets. So this army is going to get cleaned up. DTs still ravaging up here. They're going to go into the main shortly. And he's down to 134 supply. He doesn't have many harvesters, only 66. And now here comes another task force of DT is going to be able to snipe this fourth base. And now they're going into the main, killing off the important tech structures. And at the same time, I'm going to be pushing up soon into here with another warp in at the third. And then he's going to be able to call GG. So, I mean, when you think about the seven base, or uh, seven minute third base. It kind of sounds pretty gimmicky, um, what if he all ends me, etc. But it's fairly, I mean, it's not that hard to pull off unless, once you get that uh, good wall off right here. It's really just about if you can force field or not. And um, yeah, it's like not, it's really not that tough uh, of a thing to do. So I thought I'd just do a quick replay overview for anyone that wants to see it in action give my thoughts on it as well. Um, some people might ask what a, what a uh, mutalists do to something like this, um, such, or like what is, how do you respond to a Roach Baneling Bust or something like that. Um, mutalists, first off, very easy to hold off, if um, not really what you might think as, again. Um, with a 7 minute third, you get like perfect economy pretty much by the time mutalists would be getting out, so it's really not that hard to get a big warp in count of stalkers to help defend that off. You'd also be getting going towards Templar as well for this, so that's why I've kind of just kind of went going with Templar anyway in the entire matchup. So even if he does go mutilous like off of roaches, like say I only scouted this roach warrant but he had a um a spire like hitting hidden over here or something. I would already have the Templar archives ready going with Storm if he decided to do a hard tech switch into Mutas. So I would still be prepared for that. But anyway, back to if you just went to Mutalisk first. If you scout that, if you're on two bases doing a regular two base build, he's going to be able to pin you back a lot of the time because you don't really exactly have the economy to warp in mass stalkers all the time, fend him off while trying to tech up the storm and then to go out and take your third base because he's really going to be containing you pretty hard onto those two bases so sorry for my squeaky chair <laughs> I didn't really notice how much I was moving in it but um, the third base quick third base really allows you to get that um, economy up so that you really can just flood out units when the mutalisks come out cannons as well and it's n it's really not that difficult to do uh, at all and once storm gets up you get storm at a really nice timing and you can just lay waste to any sort of Lang Bane uh, Muta composition that they'll have. Um, Roach Lang Busts, you can easily scout that with the initial Stalker, going around with the Watchtowers, ca uh, checking tabs on when the third base goes up. If they ha don't have a third base by five minutes, uh, expect some sort of two base play. If you can get a scout onto the natural, that's even better. If you see like double gas and like spine crawlers up, that's pretty indicative of a two base mutal play. Um, infestors sometimes. Uh, not many people do infestor ling all ins anymore. That was a while ago. But um, yeah, or you can scout it um, to see if there's a ran a weird um, patch of lings on the map. If there's like a randomly lot of lings on the map and you really haven't like done anything with your stalker yet, that can be pretty indicative of him doing like some sort of roachling all in or a baneling bust. If he has speed at a really early time, when your stalker's going around and he has speed up already on his lings, that's pretty big sign if he's going to be doing some sort of big aggression early on. Because you don't get speed that early on when you're doing a normal three base build. And then pretty much the cap, the um, the response to either of those is just getting up sentries and cannons at your third or at your second, sorry. You don't actually take your third <laughs> if you see that coming. Um, it is risky. 
So you just put lots of cannons and chrono boost out as many sentries as you can. That's why you start getting sentries as well, like right after the stalker, just in case you see any sort of all in like that. You can easily you already have a good sentry count, and then once that warp gate finishes, you can start warping more in. You can also lay down four extra gateways automatically when you see that, um, depending on how much money you have saved up for the cannons or whatnot. It can be situational. And um I don't know, I can't really think of much else to say at this point. If you guys have any more questions, you can post comments in the thread on Reddit or in this video. And um, that's about it. That's all I have for this one. If you like it, I'll do more. I know I said I was going to do an, a guide, a written guide about something a while ago. Um, I haven't quite gotten to that yet. I'll pr uh, hopefully this will like take place for that a little bit. I'll try to get on, get on that other one. But um yeah. Uh that's all I got for this. Thanks for watching guys.